Let me ask you this. And I think it was Mobile, Alabama. Didn't your dad help book that one time or own it? Dad, uh, Roy, Roy had Roy ran all Roy ran twelve states in the South at one time. The Tennessee wow. territory was in twelve states, and uh, so uh, he wanted to open up Mobile, Alabama. He sent my dad there. I was in the, I was about four years old. And uh, mm -hmm. he took us to Mobile, Alabama, and he created what was called the Gulf Coast Territory. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow, he just uh, he just ignited wrestling. Uh, TV was just getting on. I mean, TV was coming in, and it was becoming popular. He got on the biggest station in Mobile. Uh, he drew in Lad Memorial Football Stadium. They got yeah. the wrestling got so big that he ran an event with him against Mario Galento. That's and, right. Uh, they drew uh, over 30,000 people in uh, 1958. Unheard in of. Alabama. Unheard of. That was probably the biggest gate or the biggest crowd in the United States up to that time, right? It was probably close. I mean, they had Chicago and some of those cities up north, the big, huge cities that uh, they would draw sometimes of 40,000 in the, in the big uh, baseball stadiums or football stadiums. But it was by a huge, huge crowd for that day and time. It was, it was really a tremendous crowd. And they did a lot of stuff there that, uh, you know, uh, that he he ended up doing when all of his promotions he went from uh, really from one state to another, but in this match with Mario Galento Dutch, it only lasted seven minutes. Uh, they they hard weighed each other. Uh, yeah, uh, explain that. Both guys, both guys. My dad's nose was broke. Uh, his eyes were black for two weeks. He couldn't drive a car. Uh, Mario Galento had seventy two stitches in his face from where Dad had busted him. And uh, so that 40,000 people were, you let, they left there as wrestling fans. Uh, I saw a picture one time when I was a kid, and there was nobody sitting in the first three rows because the blood was flying back out of the, out into the first three rows of ringside. Fans were, were getting bloody sitting there watching. See, this is the first time I'm hearing this story, and I'm enjoying it. I'm sitting here like a, I'm sitting here like a fan myself, saying, then what happened? And then what happened? And then what happened? <laughs> Okay, so the, the, they moved out of the, the ringside seats to have the blood miss them. I'd, I'd heard it was a, a brutal, brutal match. Oh, yeah. It, you know, they have pictures of Mario Galento. If uh, fans want to find it on um, Google, I'm sure they're there. Of After that match, uh, with his eyes are black and he's got stitches and he's got, he's got stitches in seven places on one eye. Busted him seven times on the one eye. You know, I mean, so uh, it was crazy stuff. Uh, and there was a tremendous angle. I mean, uh, we could spend a, a bunch of time on this. I don't want to go too far into it, but uh, they worked an angle like this is what they were doing, Dutch. Uh, they uh, they they ran into each other on purpose, obviously, in a restaurant downtown. Mm -hmm. They got yeah. into a fight in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they fought out of the restaurant, and they called the police. The police came down, and they recognized who they were. Uh, and the police wouldn't stop it. They they got back. They just backed off and watched them fight. Uh, Dad had a Cadillac, a brand new old Cadillac, man. This, this is way back in uh, 58. And uh, Dad <laughs> said he grabbed him with Glento by the back of the head and he slammed his face in the Cadillac so hard that it put a dent in the in the hood of his Cadillac with Glento's face. You know, and that's the kind of angle they did getting ready for this. They had this type of deal. That's why they drew such house. And, uh, you know, fans really believed back in those days. Well, how could you not yeah. believe that? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> what they were doing, you know, you don't bust it. They, you don't see that anymore. Uh, when's the last yeah. hardware you ever saw, man? The last what? <laughs> the last hardware? hardware you ever saw. <laughs> oh, probably back in the late 70s, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and was... the guys today don't even know what the hard way is. Yeah, I mean, they get busted that's sometimes. Good. So all you got to do is say, hey, when you hit something too hard and you start bleeding, it's called a hard way. But yeah. if a guy wants to hard way you, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's an art to that too. And a guy showed me one time, he said, you take your finger and you pop them right there and that'll open it up. Yeah. 
Dad was great. And I was saying, and I, I was telling the guy I want to do that. I said, I don't know about that. <laughs> let's let's just go the old school thing. <laughs> no need to beat the crap out of me. I don't I don't need to believe it. The fans need to believe there it. There you go. <laughs> but but that always fascinated me, that big, big house that your dad drew in Mobile, Alabama at Lad Stadium. 30 something thousand people or whatever it was. It's a, and when I first heard that number, I said, bullshit. They didn't draw no 30 something thousand in Mobile, Alabama. The town's not that big. But it was, wrestling was over so strong. Did, did, did they have ratings then or not? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You mean uh, like uh, Nielsen and Arbitron for, yeah, for, did, your, they, for your audience they ratings? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. They did. Uh, uh, the guy I ran when I got to, after I ran opened up in Knoxville, I went down and bought out that the old Gulf Coast territory. Got mm -hmm. on the same TV that my dad got on uh, to 20, 20 years earlier, and uh, with the same guy, and a guy named CP Persons who was the general manager, and uh, we were able to take the wrestling uh, his his ratings back to the point where Dad was. He told me your dad used to get an 80 share. An 80 share was like, uh, it was 80% of the homes that were watching TV were watching yeah. wrestling. Right. So eight, you know, four out of five homes that had their TVs on were watching wrestling. And uh, CP, CP said, I don't know, I've never, he said, I don't think anybody will ever do that again. We were able to do it again in two years. Once we were on that television station, we hit an 80 again. We used to do an 80 share in Knoxville. With the yeah, southeast, an eighty share in Knoxville. Eighty share in Knoxville for four years. We we had an eighty share or above. And let me to explain to all the people listening, Ron Fuller does not get the credit he deserves for not only doing all this other stuff in wrestling, but pure booking. You just kept it simple, straight up. And you touched on things that people would respond to. And that was your, that was your contribution. And you could, I like the way you say, if you do this, then we're going to come back with this. Then we, you were always like two or three weeks away. Yeah. And now when you gave a finish to the talent, they knew where they were headed. WWE, they may tell the top guys that. But other guys, they don't tell them nothing. They just say, go do this tonight. You don't need to know. But I really enjoyed working under your booking because it was easy. Not only was it easy, it made sense. And if I understood it, now I think I can make the people understand it. 